I'm Adrian Smith, and I'm with Fred Larrabee, and we're both authors on this new paper that came out describing one of the fastest animal movements ever recorded, which is the snap of the mystery of snap giants. And so we're at the Smithsonian right now where Fred works. He's a postdoc in the entomology department. And uh, we're just going to have a conversation about what we think is the most interesting parts of this research. So this is like, this is like one in a lineage of the fastest animal on Earth, mm -hmm. right? Like, at one point, the Odonomachus trap giants were the fastest animal appendage movement. Then I think it got overtaken by the termites, and now it's these. But do you actually think these are the fastest animals on Earth? I don't. <laughs> well, what's faster? I, like well, other mysterium, probably? Maybe. Uh, yeah. so, so there's um, dozens of species of mysterium. And so, we should say officially these are the fastest right now. Right documented. now. Right now. But they, they should get a little undocumented faster. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So there's there's a lot of other mysterium species. Um, there are a lot of termites. The work on snapping termites is just starting, um, mm -hmm. and 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 there's a lot to learn about how fast they are, and it wouldn't because we often see a scaling. Um, of, of animal speed with body size. Mm -hmm. Smaller animals tend to be faster um, than larger animals. Um, it would not surprise me that some of these termites that are much smaller than mysterium are, are much faster. Oh, really? Yeah. Huh. So I'm interested in hearing from you like what you thought was the most interesting part of this particular study and how different that is from what I think is the most interesting for me as a scientist. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah, sure. Well, so. I think there are two really interesting things about this system and this particular paper. Um, the interesting thing about the system is that these ants are very different from other really fast movements. Um, in most cases, if you think of other trap jaw ants or, or um, grasshoppers or other spring-loaded animals, a lot of the components that make up that spring-loaded system are all internal. You can't really see them very well. Um, but the, the snapping ants, because their jaw is acting both as the thing that's accelerating and the spring, you can see it all very easily, uh, almost with the naked eye. You don't even have to use particularly fast cameras to be able to see it. And so that makes it a really interesting system for doing more um, sophisticated studies of, of looking at the relationship between the shape of the jaw and the muscles and the performance output of the system. The other really interesting thing about the results that we found is, uh, um, of the experiments that we did, is comparing these ants to closely related non-snapping ants. Uh, we found very interesting results about the, uh, about the shape of their jaws and how they're specialized to be able to do this one specific behavior. They're actually, the shape of their jaws it actually allows them to bend more than, than other ants that have biting jaws, which have to resist deformation. Um, snap jaw ants have jaws that, that are very well suited for bending and acting like a spring. And I think that's a really cool result because it puts this behavior in a, 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 an evolutionary context and we can get kind of a glimpse in how this morphology has evolved to be able to do this very specific thing. Okay, let me tell you what I thought was the coolest part. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, it's not really self-evident from the paper or maybe the other pieces of media we put out for it, but these are like crazy cryptic ants that we don't come across that, that much. That's right. Even the comparison group, the stigmatoma that we did, um, at, I found those in, in Durham um, when I was just doing field work, but every time I find them, like it's a special thing. Yeah. Like it's after hours and you just, I just happen to stumble into them. Um, so I think it's really cool that like these things are just out there hidden and that things that haven't been studied really well yet because they're hard to get and hard to come across or rare to come across um, are out there and are potentially in this case like one of the most highly sort of advanced performance of this particular thing of, of movement of animals. Yeah, absolutely. They're, I mean, they are very cryptic, very hard to find. There's relatively few papers published on these ants other than you know, biodiversity surveys where you can do passive sampling and find them in the leaf litter. The other cool part when we were writing this paper is that um, there's convergent evolution on this idea of snapping. Um, there's termites that do it. That's right. They're mandibles that deform them and snap them. So these are some of the ideas that we were talking about when we were writing the paper that, you know, these guys, because they're in 
rotten logs and and tunnels that are pretty narrow. Yeah. It might be a, an adaptation to that nesting strategy, similar to the termites, where you don't need a whole lot of room to use this. Um, yeah. You can use it in in tunnels. But again, I mean, this is all like <laughs> yeah. speculation at this point. Yeah. Okay, so let's talk about like one of the figures yeah, sure. that still sort of mystifies me because hmm. it's way outside of my expertise. So finite element analysis is is a it's an engineering tool that's um, that's used to simulate uh, how a structure will respond to a force that's applied to it. So so you built a model of the the stigmatoma, the non-snapping jaws, and the mystrium jaws. And then you can basically, in the program, distort them and see how the force is distributed on the mandible itself? That's right. We tried to simulate muscle loading. So we applied a force where the muscle that closes the jaws attaches. So the main difference between the, the stigmatoma non-specialized jaw and the mystrium jaw is how the force is distributed or how it's concentrated? There was no difference in the in the distribution or the amount of stress that the two jaws um, experience. So they were both like the structures uh, likely to break basically at the same applied force. Okay. Um, what was different was the total strain energy was very different between the snapping jaws and the biting jaws. Um, the snapping jaws had a much higher total strain energy, which means that they're much more likely to bend, uh, which fits because it's a spring. If you're a biting ant, right. you don't want your jaws to bend. Right. Okay, um, sure. So, so you're going to, uh, your jaw is going to evolve a structure that's, that, that would be resistant to bending, mm -hmm. um, which makes sense. Mm -hmm. um, if your jaw is a snap jaw um, and it's acting as a spring, you want it to be able to bend. So the morphology is is structured in such a way to be able to bend more. Yeah. yeah. And the morphology that allows them to do this is really interesting. So all ma uh, ant jaw, most ant jaws are flattened uh, dorsal ventrally, so like from the top to the bottom. Mm. Um, and, and that allow that helps re, um, resist uh, uh, bending and stress in in the normal plane that they're used. The um, snap jaws are also flattened, but laterally. So so if you look at um, so it's basically flattened in a perpendicular orientation from the biting jaws. Oh, yeah. And that allows them that that's what gives them uh, allows them to bend more easily. Well, um, if you are still watching this video um, <laughs> and interested, you can leave comments uh, below here uh, where it's posted, and we will try to respond to them. Actually, why not? If you have questions about the study, just leave them in the comments. Um, thanks, Fred. Thanks for doing this. Oh yeah, thank you. Yeah.